Hello and welcome back to Friday Minis. On our Wednesday episode, we took a look at a shift register and that came in an IC chip form and well, we saw how by pausing a particular line and changing up a data line at the same time, we could actually feed it serially with information. Now, I briefly mentioned in the episode that the Arduino actually comes with a shift function as well, though we didn't use it in that episode because you know, we wanted to build it with our bare hands. But today, let's go ahead and take a look at that particular function because, well, it demonstrates something very interesting to us. The syntax of that statement looks something like this. Of course, you're going to have to, well, tell it which pin to actually send the data to, as well as the correct pin to pause the clock on, because under the hood, that is what this function is doing. However, the last two arguments are the more interesting ones because, well, the data you actually supply it is just a number. That's right, that number at the end gives some information about all eight pieces of data you are going to stream out. And, well, if you think about it, it makes sense because, well, if you have eight binary things that, you know, can be either zero or one, well, that is essentially an eight bit number. In other words, a number that runs from 0 to 255. So what this means is, all we need to do is to give it a number. This function will break down that number into its binary representation, and then basically go one by one, pausing the clock at the right time and sending out the right level, right, be it high or low for the current bit. So what this means is, if we supply it a number, and we actually increase that number gradually over time, you expect to see, well, your typical binary incrementation pattern, which is indeed what we see right here. I'm doing exactly what I've described, and that is to feed it increasing numbers, of course with a little delay so it doesn't run too fast. And as you can see, our 8 LEDs actually flash in that pattern. Of course, I've set it to overflow when it hits 255. So yeah, it basically resets back to zero and then counts up again. So yeah, just a little add-on to what we've discussed on Wednesday. Clearly, if you don't really want to mess around with the clock line and the data line yourself, this is a good alternative to doing it, right? Having everything on one line. And if what you want to represent is indeed a numerical value, all the better for you. Because then you don't have to bother about breaking it down into its binary representation. This function will do that for you under the hood. That's all there is for this episode of Friday Minis. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've gained some insight today. But until next time, you're watching 0612 TV with nerdfirst.net. Thank you very much for watching. If you like my work and are feeling generous, you can shoot me a one-time donation on PayPal or sign up for a recurring one on Patreon. Of course, you can simply like, comment, and subscribe. You know the deal. For more videos, links to my channel and a related playlist are on screen. Thank you for your support.